in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us.
please come forward, kids, for the children's message, whether you're a big kid or a small kid. Go on. Why don't we sit down? Yeah? That was a lot of exercise. Let's sit. Okay. So, kids, do you know why we wave palms around this Palm Sunday? Why we call it Palm Sunday? To honor God. That's, that's a good answer. I was expecting the answer to Jesus, which is always a good answer. Exactly. We come to honor God. And it's biblical, right? Because we're, we're Bible-believing Lutherans. And we believe in this thing called the Bible. And it comes straight out of the Bible. It's a reenactment from the 19th chapter of Luke. The procession of the palms. So you know who Jesus is, right? At this point, Jesus is kind of an old man con compared to your standards. He's 33 years old, which is like ancient. How old are you? Five years old. So he's like, I don't know, I don't have good math, but he's like 20 times your age. <laughs> Not good math, sorry. <laughs> and Jesus, he was a wise guy. He was a really smart guy. He knew what was about to happen. He knew that his time on earth was drawing to a close. So Jesus journeyed toward Jerusalem in the last week of his life. And as Jesus journeyed, large crowds began to follow Jesus. Because by this point, people were pretty much on board with Jesus. He's a good guy. He's doing all these miracles. He's, he's heal, healing people. He's giving sight to the blind. He's raising the dead. We ought to follow this guy. We can trust in him. So these large crowds were following Jesus to Jerusalem. And then Jesus said, you know what? My feet kind of hurt. Can you go and, and get a ride for me? He said this to his disciples, right? So his disciples went to a city called Bethpage. And do you know what kind of ride they got for Jesus to ride into Jerusalem? A donkey. They got him a donkey. Not a uh, Chevrolet Silverado. Not a horse. Not a four-wheeler, not, not an uh, elephant, they got him a donkey. So they picked Jesus up, and they set him on the donkey, and um, I've been dying to hear your best donkey impression, so can we, can we hear your best donkey? I'll give you my best donkey impression, because I've, I've just been dying to give you my best donkey impression.
they knew that he was the king, he was the Messiah. And so that's why we do this. There's actually a biblical meaning behind, um, besides the point that this is just super fun to walk around the sanctuary and go like this, it actually comes straight out of the Bible. Yeah? So let's pray. Will you pray with me? Please pray with me. Gracious God. Gracious God. Please repeat after me. Gracious God. Gracious God. We give you thanks. Praise and adoration. We accompany you as you have accompanied us. We give you praise, loud and glory, for the ways that you love us. As we journey, walk with us. Teach us. Help us. Help us to serve others. As we go forward, give us faith, God. And help us to always praise and thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you. Keep waving them branches. Okay, you can take a seat now. So that's the fun part, right? That's the, that's the fun part. And now we go to announcements. So stay tuned for announcements. We have a lot of announcements. Really, I just want to keep you informed on what we have going on this week. This week is Holy Week, so every week is Holy Week, right? But this one is just a little more holy than the rest. We have a number of worship services planned this week. Beginning Thursday, we have Monday, Thursday. That worship service is at 7. It's at Providence Valley Lutheran Church. So we're all going to come out there and worship together with the folks of Providence. Good Friday, which is the next day. That's at 7 o'clock as well. That's here. So we're going to invite those Providence people here to worship with us that night. Saturday, there's nothing. Right? We could have worship that day, but we gave you a break that day, so consider yourselves lucky. Then Easter Sunday, that's a big day. There's a lot going on. At 7 o'clock, we have a sunrise worship service at 7. So if you're an early bird and you want to come worship with us at 7, we'd be happy to have you. At 7.30, we're eating breakfast. Now, here's, here's uh, my, my spin on breakfast. This year, we're having egg bake muffins, and fresh fruit. So if that convinces you to get to church, I, you know, please come meet with us. After that, we have festival worship, which is a little bit longer of a worship, I would say, at 8.30 and 10. So please come and worship with us. I forgot one announcement. At 2 p.m. on Friday at the Care Center, we'll have a Good Friday worship as well. So if you're in and around town that day and you want to come worship at 2 p.m. at the Care Center, Please do so. Uh, that worship service will be led by Rose Marie, and I will be her little altar boy that day. So I look forward to serving her and worshiping together with you and the people at the Care Center, of course. And last but not least, I don't think I can emphasize this enough. We're, we're behind financially. So we're starting a campaign today called the Makeup Campaign. Our goal is to make up on the deficit that we're, we're sitting in front of right now. And so what we're going to do is hand out a number of envelopes. All of these envelopes have a value of, of $1 to, I think, $250. So one, two, three, four, five, all the way to $250. We ask that you would take an envelope and you would fill that envelope to help um, supply our ministries and keep this place vibrant and running and operating smoothly so we can do the, the wonderful service um, that we do not only here but out in the community. So let's say you take a 250 and you can't contribute that amount all by yourself. Call up a friend. You guys all have friends, right? Call up a friend to get that envelope filled and, and on May 5th, I believe, we're wrapping up our makeup um, campaign. Now here's the kicker, because there's always a kicker with a campaign of this magnitude. 
If we make up the deficit and get all those envelopes filled, Pastor Kendall and I are going to allow the kids to put makeup on us. <laughs> and let's be honest, Pastor, where did he go? We, we could use a little makeup, I think, right? So I think that is going to be a fun way for the kids to get involved, too. And also, we're, we're going to hand some of these envelopes out to the Sunday school kids. So all hands on deck. We come together each morning and every day on Sunday as the body of Christ. And so we're going to come together, all of us, to try and make up this deficit. We're going to have a little fun at the end and get some makeup put on us, which I'm thrilled for. Um, that's all I have for announcements. Let's continue worshiping together. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord.
just to fill you in on the gaps, um, th today is called Passion Sunday. Palm Sunday slash Passion, Passion Sunday. We process in with the palms. It's very joyful. The crowd is uh, honoring Jesus. Um, they're very uh, supportive of Jesus. And that's the palm, palm part of the Palm Sunday. We transition now into the Passion narrative. That same crowd that accompanied Jesus into Jerusalem with joyful shouts of affirmation, giving him the royal treatment, has turned their backs on Jesus. And as we now hear, they're not being so supportive. The, the mood has turned very somber. So um, get comfortable. This is 49 verses of the Bible, which is uh, very, very long. The 23rd chapter of Luke, 1 through 49. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, the king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he heard that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who, had, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad. For he had been waiting to see him for a long time because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. And then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man and one who was perverting the people. And here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, as he has done nothing to deserve death, I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict, and their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for the one who had put him put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they lived. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never before bore, and the breasts that never nurse. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this, when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place 
that is called skull the skull, they crucified Jesus. There were the criminals. One on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself as he, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. It was about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon when the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw, saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, grace and peace to each one of you this day from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The name of my best friend growing up was Jordan Rodriguez. Jordan had a big loving family and he was, and they were all proud of their Colombian roots, which was their father's home country. As Colombians, they appreciated things like soccer, music and dance, food and family, and the Spanish language, the native language of Colombia. One thing that I remember vividly about the Rodriguez's was their rich Catholic faith. They were proud to share their faith and express openly how the love of Christ made a difference in their lives. Cassie, Jordan's sister, was probably the most outspoken about her faith. And one day she rounded us up to go and see the movie The Passion of the Christ, which had just come out in theaters. How many of you have seen that movie? Anybody? Okay, some of you. As it is found in Luke 23, The Passion of the Christ tells the passion narrative, only in graphic detail. As a 12-year-old, this was a movie I was not ready for. And as the credits rolled, I remember feeling shocked, stunned, and speechless. I couldn't wrap my head around the way that Jesus was beaten and flogged, bleeding and wounded, and made to walk to the place of his crucifixion, all the while receiving insults and bodily harm. The reason, though, I think the passion narrative is so difficult and challenging for people of any age is not only because it's gruesome, but also because it reveals the truth. In this principal moment in the life of Jesus, all sentimentality falls by the wayside, and we are left with the truth about who we are and who Christ is. As this story tells us, it is humans who betrayed and arrested Jesus. It is humans who mocked, whipped, and beat Jesus. It is humans who brought
brought Jesus before the authorities demanded that he be killed. And it is humans who, when the emperor declared Jesus innocent, shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! It is humans who laid hold of him, stripped him of his clothes, and adorned him with a crown of thorns. And it is humans who took Jesus, beat him to within an inch of his life, and nailed him to the cross, where he hung until his last breath. That is the truth about us revealed in this story. But this story also reveals the truth about God in Christ and his passion. This story re reveals the truth of Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, who came to love and serve, who came to challenge the established religious order, advocating for the love and fair treatment for the least, lowest, and forgotten. This story tells the truth of the humble Christ that disregarded his own safety, his own well-being, and his own life by putting the needs of others first. This story reveals the truth of a God so loving that God would go to any extent to love us, to care for us, and to save us, even to the extent of dying on a cross. And in the cross, this story reveals the greatness of Christ's passion for each and every one of us. A passion so great that it comes without any conditional response. As I grow older, I have come to appreciate the Passion narrative. In all its detail and truth, this story about Jesus Christ and his passion allows us to draw a clear diagnosis and subsequently a cure for that diagnosis. Let me say more. On the one hand, this story reveals our sin and even magnifies it. This story shows us our natural evil capabilities that make it possible for us to round up an innocent man, disregard all justice and moral code, and kill him in the streets. Sin is our diagnosis, and while treating the symptoms may provide short-term relief, in the case of sin, our disease is terminal. Our sinful actions are only the symptoms of the deeper disease that is original sin. So what is the cure? If we know our disease is sinfulness, then what could be our cure? As Lutherans, we confess that our cure from sin does not come from within. And that's evident of our liturgy. Every week we stand and confessing our sins before God and one another using these words. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. As Christians, when we say that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves, this is not religious hyperbole, but the truth of our condition. When we make this statement, we acknowledge our powerlessness over sin, recognizing that our sinful condition is not a problem of behavior, but a problem of identity. It's just who we are. Just as water's natural tendency is to run downhill, so too is our natural tendency to sin. That is our condition. So what is the cure? What is the cure for our diagnosis of sin? Well, there's only one cure. Jesus Christ, our Savior.
Savior and Lord. Jesus insists three times in each of the four Gospels that it is necessary for him to die, suffer, and raise, be raised from the dead. No other understanding of Messiah or Savior will do. Jesus' insistence on the necessity of his death underscores the extent and seriousness of the problem of human sin, which he freely chooses to take on for our sake. Confessing our sinful condition and inability to free ourselves makes the good news of Jesus Christ all the more good. So as you leave, hear the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. Jesus is the innocent bringer of life, and although he did nothing to deserve to be killed, Jesus came to give his life to save ours. This is the God we are dealing with, brothers and sisters, a God who loves and saves, a God who loves us so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. This is the essence of Christ's passion. Thanks and praise be to God. Amen. Sing our hymn of the day, Be Thou My Vision, 793.
Most gracious God, we praise you for loving us beyond measure and comprehension. The mystery of your abiding presence in our lives comforts us in times of need and calls us forth to love others. We thank you for withholding nothing of yourself to show the depth of your desire for us to be one with you. Lord, in your mercy. As signs of spring seem overcast with stubborn winter, we thank you that your grace persistently breaks through into our lives. You restore our souls after times of darkness and doubt and discouragement. Your spirit makes each day new and revives our hope. We thank you for laughter that breaks through tension, forgiveness that makes all resentments flee, reconciliation that reverses rifts, clarity, and purpose that restore meaning. We pray for those who doubt their own worth and seek to feed their souls with food that does not satisfy. We pray this morning for those who are grieving, and we lift up to you and love the memory of Otto Vogel, the great grandson of Winnie and Beth Anderson. We pray for those who feel lost, for those who are ill, for those facing or recovering from surgery. Remembering before you Karen Batula Trimpin, Tom Beals, Ellsworth Olson, Ken Club, Vicki Grove, David Anderson, Braden Baker, Olivia Baldwin, Mary Moe, Bonnie Westfield, Jim Anderson, Evelyn Lundgren, Lauren Thone, Brad Matson, Jack Flayton, Margaret Westgard, Monica Kennedy, Jack Lewis, Jack Scordall, Chuck Peterson, Doug Pearson, Nancy Fussy, Todd and Marlis Muir, and Ruby Anderson, and others that we name before you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God of mystery and wonder, because we know the ending of the story is tempting for us to ignore the darkness of this coming week. It's tempting for us to go about our business as usual. It's tempting for us to move too quickly to the dawn of light on Easter morning. So give us courage and strength to live for a while in the darkness the darkness into which your Son, Jesus Christ, entered that we remember this week. And as we come to this table that you so welcome us to, the table of communion, let us remember his body given and his blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy. All this and whatever else you see that we need, we pray that you would grant it. For Jesus' sake, in his name we pray. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated now as we receive our morning call.
remember in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, lead us into your, to your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
mistakes this morning? Or did you count them all? Yeah, I know. That's Molly's job. I'm on your, I'm on your field. I'm on your everything. Chris, Chris, Rosen. Now I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm doing the Yep, that's right. And then the Rachel Rosen. What's the name of the bad people?
Hi. Chris, do you want to, are you going to go up to third floor? I can. That, yeah. Are they ready? Huh? Are they ready? Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to get everything set up here too. Oh, that's fine. I'll be right on. Okay. Yeah. I'll be right there.